Made some nice progress on the wall today. Uh, you can see there, uh, that's the final box that's going to allow access to electrical. Uh, previously I've made this box up here and this box down there and the upper and lower boxes, what the plan is with them is I'm going to screw a separate piece of OSB over them. Four simple screws and insulation attached to the back side of the OSB so that in the event I need to run more wiring I can take them off, but they're not really easy accessible. Uh, but the center section because this is the fuse panel for the entire house, it needs to be easily accessible. And there we are. So, what I did here was I assembled a frame of timber strand, much as I have all the other ones. Just one, it's like six and a half inch screw that goes all the way into here, uh, stuck in the ends. I guess I didn't need to countersink that in reflection, but all the ones on this surface I have to countersink for the plywood. Uh, it always be. Anyway, so I build that frame, nothing too special. This back section needed to get uh, rebated just a little bit because you can kind of see there, there's that plate that prevents me from screwing into all the wires that run through these rear studs. And you can see here, these massive wires that go in and out and there's wires all over the place. So anyway, I had to rebate that a little bit and off put this screw off center so it goes just above that plate. So I didn't want to damage any wiring. So we got a screw here, screw here, screw up there and a screw here. On this side, the left vertical lines up up here. You can see it doesn't line up on a stud, it lines up on that insulation there. So there's no thermal bridging there. Um, here, where there is thermal bridging, you can see a little better up top, I put this thin layer of foam. It gets completely crushed when I screw it together. I'm not sure how effective it'll be at stopping the thermal bridging, but it should be better than nothing. At least that's what I'm hoping. There is a full piece of it here where it's wood on wood or would be wood on wood and you can see it runs all the way down and I've done that for all of this secondary timber strand you see in the wall anywhere where there would be wood on wood contact if you kind of see it back there that little bit of blue uh, there is that falling here you can see it too I've cut it back but there's that blue peeking through uh, anyway so then what I want to do is install the OSB to here leaving a very small gap and have this door panel that I can open to reach the electrical box. So that posed a challenge in terms of how I was going to hinge it. I thought of perhaps just surface mounting it, but that would have been too easy. This is birch veneer. This over here is going to be OSB. I couldn't go with a typical butt hinge. It would be screwing into end grain and lamination and just be a bloody mess. So I went with, let's see. You can see how this, this piece one is straight and this one is, is, uh, is notched. But because I wanted this piece to fit flush on the timber strand and not be set off the timber strand by the width of the hinge, I had to mortise this out to mount the hinge, sunk it in a little bit, so now the hinge is just about flush with the adjoining surfaces. The other thing I wanted to do is split the width of this piece of timber strand so that I can have my wall piece land here and my door land here and I don't have to double stud it. Um, so in order to get this hinge so that it was in the center and not just on the outside, I had to make these big mortises here and here and this one uh, for good measure because I was being stupid when I routed it. This is actually in the right spot, but as you can see, it is too deep. So I, I moved it up to here. Shouldn't be a big deal. The hinges don't w work perfectly. I'm not going to really care. You see there, that was almost a mistake in that I marked off where I was going to rebate. And then I realized that I was supposed to be rebating on the other side. So thankfully, that's just a bad marking, not a bad spot. I also had to make... That's really out of focus. I apologize. I'm going to have to make little rebates here. Um, there you go. That, uh, that allow for that. So this should allow me to install the... If I bring the OSB tight to the back of the hinge... It should just be the width of that hinge plate will be the spacing between them. And then what I think I'm going to do is on the inside, I'm not sure if I will install insulation here or not. I may not because there's not all that much space. But I'm going to install weather stripping on this face that, that projects out a little bit. And when I close that, it'll gasket it. And I think I'm going to use a magnetic catch here, but I'm not entirely sure. You can see down here, uh, the door is short, and that is actually on purpose. Here's the piece that goes there. This is another one I'm going to attach with four simple screws because 
uh, my miter saw is going to go here, and I'm going to have a bench here. And the point is to slide an 8-inch joiner underneath the bench. And as I don't have an 8-inch joiner now to measure, I'm not sure if I've allowed enough height to fit the joiner under the bench and have the bench and still be able to open this door over the bench. But I didn't want to open the door and have all these fuses beneath you know, where the counter surface was. So I can always futz with this door and maybe even make another door later on if I have to, but based on the little bit of information I have now, that's at least my attempt to allow this door to open after the bench is built in, which is a couple steps down the road. So that's where we're going to call it a night tonight. Tomorrow, if I just pick up a handle and two magnetic catches, we'll be in pretty good shape. So that's the progress on the shop this weekend. All things being equal, it's a pretty productive weekend in that I've not had a solid block of time like I did this afternoon in quite a few weeks. And we'll take it from there. I'll keep you posted.